So I'm gonna go over a basic understanding of what sound frequency is, what Hertz is, and how to identify different frequencies, and how to discover your own hearing limits. Now, if you're looking for someone to get every aspect of this explanation and all of the terminology 100% correct, have a blast in the comments below. I'm shooting for simplicity and ease. I'm also going to announce the winners of my 5,000 subscriber giveaway at the end of the video. If you missed the giveaway, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll never miss a video. I met up with a viewer in Texas recently, and he's a younger guy. He wanted to know more about audio and YouTube. And he asked me what Hertz is, and it occurred to me that he can't be the only one with that question. Now, I'm all about helping new people on this channel, so I figured it'd be a good topic to go over. Hertz is just the number of pulses per second or cycles per second. In audio, it's the number of time the cone vibrates or cycles per second. So one, two, three, four. So it's the number of times the cone moves in and out per second. Okay, so that's kind of a simple way to look at it. So I showed him a video that I use that shows wavelengths and also displays the frequency being played. Now the audible human hearing range is between 20 and 20,000 Hertz. At 15,000 Hertz, where many people stop hearing as they go up in the frequency range, the wavelength is about an inch long. But at 20 Hertz, the wavelength is almost 60 feet. Uh, that's a school bus and a half in length. So we're talking a pretty big wavelength here. By using the video I'm talking about, you can learn quite a few things. You can get an idea of the shape of the waves and you can also get a visual reference on the frequency you're hearing. Now, if you wonder what the difference is between 100 hertz and 1000 hertz, you now have a way to know for sure. You can actually see what you're hearing. But here's where it got interesting. There were a few people there who had hearing damage of various degrees, and I wanted to see when they stopped hearing higher frequencies. Now, we did this in a garage to avoid upsetting others in the house. Uh, once you get over 5000 hertz, it starts to sound like nails on a chalkboard, and many, finding ups many find it upsetting. So just an FYI if you're going to try this, be aware of your surroundings, and be aware that certain people may just get really annoyed by this. So uh, just, just some, some word of caution there. Now I'll also point out that this was done on an iPad, so we're talking comically low scientific standards here. The person with the worst ears in the house was able to hear about 2,500 hertz in one ear and 5,000 in his good ear. So not good, but thankfully it wasn't a surprise to him. He knew he had some high frequency hearing damage and it was interesting to be able to put a number on it. Next up was a guy who had served in combat and fortunately for him he could still hear up to about 10,000 hertz. I can hear up to about 14,000 hertz, and the younger the listener, the higher the frequency threshold seemed to be. A 12-year-old girl was able to hear up to about 19,000 hertz, but nobody actually reached 20,000 hertz. The whole reason I was aware of this test is for testing subwoofers. Unless you have subwoofers from the list or something comparable, you won't really be able to get a strong feel for your lower frequency limits. Most subwoofers start getting quieter under 30 to 40 hertz, and some even higher than that. The subwoofer range is typically between 20 and 80 hertz, depending on where you set your crossover. So if you look at that, uh, right away from 20 to 80 hertz, you subtract 20 because you can't hear under that. So you've got about a 60 hertz effective range. And so if your subwoofer starts giving out around 40, well, now you have a 40 hertz effective range. So it really makes quite a difference. Uh, the bottom end is more important than you might think. The iPad we used for the test only went down to about 140 to 160 hertz, so we weren't able to really figure out what the lower end limits were for people, but it was an interesting thing to see where the higher end limits were. Now in contrast, an SVS PB2000 can be measured strong down to 14 hertz in room, which is why I wanted to be their first affiliate. Their subwoofers have excellent depth of presentation. Now my lower hearing limit is 17 hertz. The PB1000 trails off at about 19 hertz, leaving a tiny little two hertz gap in my hearing range. The PB2000s and every sub above that in the SVS line is truly full range base. If I had never heard a deeper subwoofer than the PB1000, I might have assumed that 19 hertz was my lower limit. I used to think that deep bass is just harder to hear, which it is, uh, and that really kept me from exploring the issue further. But it was always the subwoofers that were too shallow, not just my ears. I can hear fine down to 17 hertz, but the subwoofers got to be able to produce that. And most just don't do the job. Check out subwoofers on the list if you haven't already. 95% of subwoofers out there are just too shallow for me, and deep bass is truly transformative, both in movies and music. Also, it might be interesting to document your hearing limits and check them out later in life. 
We lose hearing naturally with time, particularly with the higher frequencies. So you may have been able to hear 16,000 hertz when you were younger, and now you're like me and you're down to 14,000 or something like that. That's perfectly normal and natural, uh, nothing to get upset about, but it, it's interesting to actually see that process go through time. Now, if you enjoy audio, please take care of your ears. You know, wear earplugs when you mow the lawn, when working with power tools, and even concerts, and perhaps especially with concerts. Uh, I've been, you know, a lot of times I take earplugs with me, uh, but recently I went to a concert and forgot, and I had to roll up uh, napkins and shove them in my ears, which is pretty uncomfortable, but uh, I had to do that because it was just so loud. I knew it was, it was damaging levels and I've got to protect my ears. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff at all, you should do the same. Another thing, uh, if you use a hair dryer, maybe look for a quiet one. You know, just before shooting this, I found some quiet hair dryers that actually made sense. One even uses infrared, so that's kind of interesting. Just keep in mind that hearing damage is usually permanent. So if you're watching this channel, you should take protecting your ears very seriously. So after that public service announcement, on to the winners. First up are my Amazon giveaways. Uh, all of the Amazon items will come with a gift receipt so you can exchange them if you already have it or you don't want it. Uh, so that's something you can do if you're like, oh, that's not what I wanted to win. You just take it, exchange it, should be no problem. So first up is James Silver of Liverpool, New York. He'll be getting a Spears and Munsell disc. Stephen O'Connor from Hackensack, New Jersey wins a kilowatt meter. Keith Columbell of Kansas City, Kansas wins an LED light strip pack. Andrew Schuerman of Worland, Wyoming wins the accountant in 4K. William Scott of Jonesboro, Georgia wins Hacksaw Ridge in 4K. And Daniel Montoya of Los Angeles wins Roger Waters The Wall in Blu-ray. All of these items can be found on my Amazon page, so if you didn't win what you were hoping for, be sure to check out that page. It really helps me a lot when you do that. And I can't thank SVS enough for giving away one of my favorite subwoofers for my viewers. I'm really excited to be giving away such an awesome subwoofer on this channel. If you're looking for SVS products, please follow my affiliate links in the description below. The better my numbers look, the easier it should be to do giveaways like this. Now for the big winner, the 2000 series subwoofer from SVS. Amanda Warwick from Palos Heights, Illinois, you have a brand new SVS subwoofer coming your way. Congratulations and thanks for subscribing. And thanks to everyone who has contributed to the growth of this channel. At least 6,800 of you have subscribed. If you watch my videos regularly but haven't subscribed yet, please do. I watch a channel called Hoovy's Garage regularly, but only recently I realized that I wasn't subscribed. So if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. So please make sure you're subscribed. And if you're a winner, watch your email. I'll be sending out a not notification for you. Lastly, please post your frequency hearing limits in the comments below. You can even do a left ear, right ear if you want. I'll post a link to the video that I use all the time in the description down below. Again, thanks for watching, congratulations to the winners, and please subscribe.